Namaste. Thank you for joining me. Today, we're going to focus on the neck, how to elongate the neck, how to support with the shoulders, and how to bring more awareness to what you're doing with your head, with your neck, and with your chest. Okay, so let's get started. Before we get started, if you want to learn the basics of Iyengar Yoga, I've designed a new course, Foundational Iyengar Yoga. This course is for you if you're a beginner, if you've been practicing for a while and you just want to deepen your understanding, or if you're a teacher and you would like to be more inspired, go back to the basics. So it's a six week course, 18 different classes, and you'll be able to go through at your own pace. You can find more details in the description box below. All right, so standing up, Someone brought to my attention the other day a very cute meme. So the meme, leaning forward, head moving down, back rounding. The next little picture is a shrimp. So picturing a shrimp with the head down. So if you find yourself with your back aching, with your head falling down, just know that this head that's on your shoulders, supported by your neck, weighs a lot. So when you lean forward and you put all that pressure on your neck, those are only small vertebrae, and those vertebrae are taking the load of the weight of your head. So depending on whether you're like this, like this, like this, all of that weight goes here. So thinking about how you can take the weight off of that, lifting from the back of the head, from the occipital bones, dropping the shoulders and looking straight ahead. Oftentimes you'll find yourself looking down. Wherever your vision is, is where your chest is going. So I'm looking down, my chest is sinking, my head is going down. So lifting the chest, looking straight ahead. Okay, just a few notes on that. All right, so now we're going to <coughs> bring our hands behind us, get this opening of the chest, shoulder blades moving down into Pashina Namaskar which is, this is namaskar in front. So it's basically the same thing in the back. So you're pressing all the fingers against one another, pressing the heel of the hand. And I have the thumb right at the sternum. So this is just a little bit of impetus to lift up, lift up through the chest. Okay, now I'm gonna take the hands in the back, just holding onto the elbows to begin with. Standing in Tadasana, even on your feet, thighs back, top of the buttock moving down, and then roll the shoulders back, lift up through the chest. So the front ribs are lifting up, sternum is lifting up. And then change the cross on the arms. Okay, so your head is lifting up. Remember those two bones? You can feel those bones, lift those bones up away from the shoulders. All right, now you're gonna take your hands behind you so I take the hand and I reach it up as much as I can and then take the other hand and slide the fingers up to meet the other opposite hand and finger. And then press as much as you can to bring all the knuckles against one another. The heel of the hand moving the shoulders back and then press into the hands. Press into the hands, lift up. Stand in Tadasana, lengthening the back of the head, dropping the shoulders, feel the shoulder blades moving down so that from there you can lengthen both sides of the neck equally. So you're not tilting your head one side. When I tilt, you can see one side is shortening. The other side is now shortening. So then you can start to feel pressure in your neck. So lift up, lengthen both sides. And then release, extend your arms down. All right, I have a tall stool here, which you could use a kitchen countertop, you could use uh, the back of a couch, divan, you could use um, a chair. So I'll show this and the chair, just so that you know that whatever you have at home, you can use. I'm coming back with my legs, so I want the thighs moving back, so as to lengthen the side trunk. And then I'm gonna slide my hands and lengthen my arms and just bring my forehead onto that end of the stool. Okay, so just resting the forehead, 
moving the shoulders back, moving the thighs back. So that's one position that you can do. And then I'm going to bend the elbows. I'll walk in a little bit. So more of the arm is on the on that bench. And then I'll bring my forehead down. So pressing the arms down, opening the armpit area, and then I'm sliding the chin forward. So here, when I'm sliding the chin forward, I want to lengthen the neck, so not just throw the head back, but as I slide the chin forward, I move my shoulders back. So it's got to be this extension here, not just compressing here. So you're, you're lengthening and you're moving, I'm pressing the arms into that top of the stool, moving the outer arms back, which then brings the outer arm to the shoulders, moving back, which moves the top of the shoulder back, and then I can extend the neck forward. So just make sure your feet are underneath your hips so that you can press back, move your hips back. And with that, I'm lengthening the whole side trunk, extending my chin forward. and then come up. So here I've been lengthening, moving this down. So you're making maximum space in the neck. Okay, the next one, you bring your forehead onto that chair like we did to start with. You could have a blanket or something if you needed it. Move your thighs back, lift the tips of your shoulders, extend your arms back. You can also hold a strap if it's difficult to bring your hands together or you could hook your thumbs. All right, lift your shoulders, move your hands back, and then lengthen the back of the head and move the tops of the shoulders by extending the arm. Okay, just another way to get that length. So your forehead is pretty much fixed here and your arms are lengthening, so the shoulders are moving back. Okay. Okay, this is with the chair, so for some of you, you have a chair there at home that you can use the chair if you're not using the counter. Okay, now you can also come forward with your chin like so and bring your hands onto the chair. So here is how we did it before. Now I'm coming with my leg forward and one leg back. Back toes are facing forward and then getting that curve of the neck, but moving the shoulders down, and then extend the arms back. Just keep the, pan the hands parallel to one another, lengthening back, keep the hips moving back with the shoulders, moving the arms back, lengthen forward, and then come up. Parvo Tanasana, come back with the other leg. So first come into it, have your hands on the chair. Make sure you take that back foot back far enough. This hip is turning. You can use your hands on the chair as long as you would like, just to make sure you have support, even take the bottom rail. And then to bring the arms up, make sure you have the weight in your back foot, your front foot, you're balancing, and then extend the arms back. Lift the shoulders, stretch back, you can take your thumbs, move the shoulders away, move the back of the head away, lengthen the neck, and then release, and come up. Okay. Now we're gonna use the wall. I have ropes here. I appreciate some of you don't have ropes, but maybe this will motivate you to get ropes. It's a really nice neck release. I'm using a set here. So a set is two rings at the top, two rings at the bottom. I'm taking the rope from the bottom and just looping it over the top rope. Here's the loop, here's the knot. 
and then bringing the loop around and pulling it. Okay, so now I have two that are doing the same thing. I'm going to step back and I'm going to cross the ropes and then bring both knots just side by side. And then I'm going to bring the, the knotted area right to C7. So your ver vertebrae cervical are about that long. So it's, it's where that vertebrae usually pops out more at the neck. So you'll, you'll find the right place, but you'll come and have it so you can feel it pulling a little bit and then walk your hands or your feet forward. Use your arms and lift your chest. Press the feet into the floor. Move the buttocks in. Keep the legs straight. And just continue to hold on to the rope. So maybe start with the hands here, not the other place, so you don't have to move them. And lift the chest. And now start to feel the weight or the ropes against the neck. And to get that curve of the upper back, just keep lifting the chest. Let the head rest on those knots. If you feel that you can let go of that, if you're stable in the feet, keep pressing into the feet, keep moving the buttocks forward, tailbone forward, and you can bring your arms back and move the outer shoulders back, extend the hands, and you can even take the hands behind you if you have that availability in your shoulders, and pull down and lift up. Just let the back of the head lengthen, the neck lengthen, and allow that support to go to those vertebrae as they move into the body. Lift the chest, moving the back ribs away from the hips. And then to come out, you're going to bring your hands back onto the ropes and start to walk your feet back as you stand upright, just letting your neck lengthen, shoulders moving down, and just be there for a few breaths. And then you can walk to the wall. Bring your forehead to the wall. Take a few more breaths there. And then release. Okay, so as long as we're at the ropes, I'm going to set up for Shirshasana in the ropes. So headstand in the ropes. I don't think I've shown this in any other classes. I've taken one of the lower ropes and just drape it around that knot. And now I'm going to bring the knot in, into the loop, and pull that. Okay, so now I'm ending up with the knot. Here, I'm going to take this around and just tie a simple knot around that knot. Now, this is a pretty short rope, so I'm going to make sure I get as much that slack out of there so I can have as much space here as I can get. Some of you have longer ropes. My other wall ropes are a little bit longer, but this is a shorter one. So if you're tall, this is nice because your head won't be on the floor. Okay, I'm going to get two blankets. All right, because these ropes can feel, um, you can feel the sensation on your hips, I just take two blankets, and I have the blankets, and I just put them over the ropes here, which helps to cushion that rope as I going to be hanging from it. Okay, so the, the rounded edge is facing the center, and then I'll put the other one there, rounded edge facing the center. And I don't really need the rope for that part right there. That's going to go right around my, my hip. So I'll show you what I'm going to do when I get up. Because I need a little bit of height to get into this. Because you want to make sure you're getting it on your lower back. I'm going to come up, bring that rope right on the lower back. And then you can adjust those blankets. 
So here I'm bringing the blanket up on the rope. So when I hang, this part, there's no blanket on that at all. And then I'm going to ask someone to move the chair for me. Okay, so I'm taking the feet up onto the wall. I want to press into that, so I don't want this, this to slide, and I don't want it to go below my hip bone. So my hip bone, just sh to show you here, is the hip bone and the lower back. I don't want it here on the buttocks, because it'll just slide off. So I keep it right on the sacrum, the lower back, and I press into it. So now I'm pressing my feet into the wall, and there, because I've got so much pressure moving back onto it, um, it's not sliding. And you can just stay here, stretch your arms. So now I'm coming into the wall, walking in, bending the knees on the inside of the rope. So you can see my knees here, they're close to the wall, and they're on this side, the wall side of the rope. So I'll bend the knees out to the side, and then I'm going to bring my feet together like in Namaskar, so the soles of the feet are against one another, and then I'll start to come down. And here, if you're feeling a little bit scared, if you haven't done this before, you can bring one hand onto the floor, so you can see, okay, the floor is there, the other hand onto the floor. All right, so you're feeling stable, safe. Move your tailbone up, move your buttocks up, And just allow the legs to hold you while you release down through the abdominal cavity, through the pelvis, through the chest. And then finally, you can just bring your hands onto your elbows and hold onto the elbows. As you do that, lengthen the outer arms, which will help to extend through that whole side trunk as you come down. So the feet are pressing against the wall. The knees are moving toward the wall, and they're being pressed with that strap. Middle buttocks moving forward, tailbone moving up. And just allow yourself to be there. So you can also, if you want to get traction, as much traction to the neck as possible, when you have your arms holding onto the elbows, you're still lifting your shoulders up. You're not letting the shoulders just release down and the neck to hang or the shoulders to hang into the neck, but there's a slight lifting from the elbow to the shoulder. And then you can even take your hands behind your head, interlace your fingers, as if you were going to do headstand on the floor. And I have my thumbs right at those occipital bones, so I'm lengthening the neck, releasing the neck, which feels great. So if you don't have ropes, if you're somewhere where there's water, they, you can get ropes and have them made. There's all kinds of instructions online how to do this now. You can get hooks and have them placed in the wall. You have to make sure you have a carpenter come or someone knows what they're doing so they don't fall out. But it's quite easy to do, and you can have this set up at your house so that you can have this available to you at any time. So I'm going to come out now. So I'm going to take my hands back onto the floor. There's several ways you can come out. You can either, if you've been doing this a while, you can just lengthen the arms down and straighten the legs and bring one leg down at a time. For those of you that are just beginning this, you can take one hand back up and then take the other hand back up. If you can't, just use your abdominals and reach one arm up and then the other arm up. Walk up a little bit. What do you do now? So you're going to turn your feet, press your feet up against that wall, and use the momentum of the feet pressing to straighten your legs. Okay, so taking your hands up, press the feet, straighten the legs, and then walk your feet together or closer. And then you're going to just start to walk down the wall. And if you have a stool there or a chair, you could have a block 
bring your feet down onto that. Now I showed with the chair, I'm going to show you with, it's a little bit, because this is a high rope, this one's a little bit more difficult, but if the, the rope is lower, it won't take you as much to get up. So I have to really bring my feet up, I can bring it onto the hook, but I have to pull with my arms and then lift up, and then I come up, place that blanket, and then go through the same that we did earlier. Okay, now I'm going to show another way to come out. So I'm bringing my hands onto the floor. For those of you that have been practicing a while, that are doing handstand, press the hand down, and then start to straighten the legs. Keep the feet around that rope till you're ready to come down. So I have the full weight on my hands now. I'm going to take the feet out. And then bring one leg down and the other. And then come into Uttanasana. Let your head hang. Relax your breath. So here, the head is still lengthening. The shoulders are still lifting up. You can have your hands on the floor too. When you press your hands onto the floor, that helps to lift your shoulders. And then just allow the neck to come down. Okay? And coming up. All right, so I have a chair. I'm sh going to show this twice. Once with furniture you have at home, and once with furniture I have here. All right, so I have a chair, and I have a, a sticky mat on top of it. All right, and then I have the mat placed against a wall with a corner. All right, so I want to be able to get the same curve of the neck in Ardha Chandrasana. You could do this in Uttita Trikonasana as well. So I'm going to bring the foot forward, and I have a block there. And you have to just measure your distance. I've already measured to see where I need to be. I have the hand on the block, so you can position the hand underneath the shoulder. And then raising the back leg, I'm going to bring it so the inner edge of the foot is on that chair. And then from here, I'm going to lift the inner thigh, roll that top pelvis. And now I want to lengthen the back of the head and move with that bottom arm, move the shoulder back and then curve the, the neck and just place the back of the head around the corner. So still moving the shoulders away, press the bottom hand, move that bottom shoulder blade into the body and then look back, look up. So remember how we had the chin on the, the furniture and we slid the chin forward, and then look up, look back. You can keep your hand on your hip as well, but keep this pelvis opening, keep this inner thigh lifting up. I'm taking my hand on the inside, that I'm able to lengthen through the crown of the head and curve a little bit more. So find a position for your arm or your hand that you get the most width across your chest, and that shoulder moving back. Okay, then to come down, turn your head, look down, bend the knee, bring that back foot down, and come up. All right, so I only have one corner wall here, so I decided to show with the Tressler. Okay, because I don't have another corner, I'm using the Tressler. It's what we call the Tressler, it's like a horse. Um, Mr. Angar has developed it for us to be able to do yoga poses with. So it's really pretty cool. All right, so you externally rotate the front leg. I'm doing Ardha Chandrasana on the other side and bringing the foot in. So you'll have to measure your distance, see where you need to bring this foot to be able to still lengthen and bring the back of the head around the corner. So I'm lifting the back leg, pressing that bottom hand down into that block. And then with the Tressler, I can Take my arm back, which will help me to open through the chest. So pressing down into the bottom leg, 
So I could feel that my foot wasn't in the right place, so I came down, I adjusted it, took the foot back a bit, and then lift the front of the pelvis. I've got the back foot hooked on that trestler. So if you had a couch or something, you could even do this on a couch, the end of your couch. And now I'm moving the head back, lifting, and then you can even turn and look up. You can just keep the head back and lean the head back. So you can feel that length coming from the back of the neck, moving the shoulder down. Keep this bottom hand pressing into the block. Bring that shoulder back behind you and shoulder blade into the body and look back. Lift the chin. All right, and then to release, bending that knee, bringing the foot down. So if you had a couch, this is pretty high couch, but it wouldn't have to be this high. It could be, you know, normal size, but be at the corner, and you could bring your head around the end, and you could bring your other leg up onto the couch. Okay, so that could work too. All right, so next we're gonna do shoulder stand in the chair. So get a chair, get your bolster. Okay, so I have my chair here. I've folded the mat. I have it on the front edge of the chair, and I have a bolster. So depending on your bolster, whether it's round or longer like this, I'm going to bring it up a little bit. So I'm going to slide down and bring my head onto the floor. The neck and the shoulders will be supported on that bolster. So I sit sideways, bring the legs to the back of the chair, bring your hips in. This is a nice way to do <coughs> a headstand as well. So you just hold onto the chair, and then you can build up support, have another bolster here, and just be here. So you're pulling your shoulders back, Back of the head is lengthening. You can stay there. And then to come into shoulder stand, you're going to come down a bit, <clears throat> just releasing your back from that sticky mat, just slowly, and then bringing the back of the head on the floor. And now I'm moving the bolster just to be right under shoulders, the back of the neck. Taking the hands underneath the chair, so I'm getting that rotation again. Tops of the shoulders moving away. And here I'm bringing both feet to the end of the chair, releasing my hips so I feel more weight in my shoulders. From there, pressing the shoulders down, lengthening the neck. And then you can straighten both legs. Keep the legs active. Lift the chest. So you're... <coughs> allowing the shoulders to release down. Back of the neck is long. And you can just adjust. See where that bolster is. Maybe you want a little bit more on your neck. So I'm going to bring it up just to show you because we've been working with lengthening the neck. So now the leg is, neck is completely supported. Back of the head is supported. And then I'll take my arms back under. If the arms don't fit under, just hold the sides of the rail. Straighten the legs up. And then after you're there a while, you can bring the legs into Baddha Konasana also. Keep the chest lifted. So as you maintain that lift of the chest, you're still maintaining the movement of the shoulders away, shoulder blades away, and then the shoulder blades moving flat against the back and lifting up toward the chest. Neck is supported. Back of the head is supported. So you're getting that lengthening here of the sides of both sides of the neck. And the shoulders are moving away. So it's a nice release for the neck. It's a nice release in all because you're in a inversion. I'm just taking my feet back down to the chair now. So this inversion is helping to get that length again and all of the internal organs are able to release downward. All of the inversions are good for <coughs> relaxing the heart and bringing <coughs> just a quietness to the whole system, the parasitic symptom, the parasitic uh, nervous system is engaged and this brings the blood flow from, from the heart down to the head instead of the head to the heart which then 
begins a whole chemical release, which helps to quiet the brain. Okay, so here, because I'm still hooked on that chair, I have the weight on the chair, weight on the shoulders, I can bring my hands just to the side, which also feels very nice with the knees bent. And then to come out, I'm gonna take my hands back on the chair and the way we've been rolling the shoulders under, now we want to do the opposite. You want to lift the shoulders up and unhook the back, lift the head. The head is coming up instead of rolling under. And then just start to slide down. Keep the head lifted so the hair doesn't get pulled. And then finally, just release down so that your hips are on that chair. So this is a little high, so I'm going to take that bolster away and just let the legs rest on the chair. Okay, you can even take the bolster and bring the bolster onto the abdomen. Let that weight just help release the abdomen. And here you've got the back of the head lengthening, shoulders moving down, and the arms moving to the side so that the floor is giving you the information about your back. Feel that the shoulder blades are flat, tips of the shoulders moving down. You're getting that whole rotation, like when we brought our arms behind us. So still, you're maintaining that direction. And then with that, you're lengthening the neck and with the head completely supported. Now, if the head was, not, was moving back like this, I've shown before you take a blanket, just bring the blanket under the head to raise the head up a little bit, okay? So let's have this be our last pose here, Shavasana. So stay as long as you'd like. And enjoy that release of the neck, of the shoulders, of the chest. And here now, with the weight of the legs on the chair, releasing the upper thigh down to the pelvis. So the abdominal area is quiet, all the organs, the organic body is beginning to release even further. I'll see you next time. Namaste. All right, so you've finished the neck lengthening class um, and I hope that you've learned something, something to keep you out of pain or if you are in pain, how you can go to some of the principles and the dynamics that you've worked with here to release your neck, relieve any tension, and to bring more balance to both sides. Just check out any of the other classes. Some of them cover some of this as long as well as other things. So just look at those and practice. Practice until you feel it in your body. And then when you're sitting in your chair at your desk, and you feel uncomfortable and you feel any pain, then you can automatically self-correct. Okay? All right. Thank you. We'll see you next time. Namaste.